IoT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric. Looking after our physical well-being is one of the biggest challenges that society has to tackle. But we must be doing something right because we're all living for longer. But that raises new challenges for the health sector, challenges that digital innovation can help solve. New drugs and treatments are approved all the time. And now business is turning its attention to innovation in the care we provide to the elderly. More of that will be provided in the home. It's called social care. All of society has a stake in our health. And in this program, I'll be meeting the business leaders who are changing the way we're looked after today and how we'll be looked after in the future. I'll meet the man who's nurturing new innovation for the UK's National Health Service. I'll speak to the health entrepreneur who's starting a revolution in social care globally. And we'll find out how the innovators imagine the hospital of the future. Opportunities for business to provide healthcare solutions globally have been around for hundreds of years, but the pressure on health services worldwide is huge. According to a 2017 World Health Organization report, half the world lacks access to essential health services. The challenge for business is to create innovative ways to provide access to healthcare, but also to reduce costs for patients. The UK's National Health Service was established in 1948, offering universal health services free at the point of delivery. But there are big challenges for the NHS in the 21st century. Tackling those challenges is Mike Hannay. He's chair of the Academic Health Science Network, which aims to speed up innovation in the NHS. Prior to taking up his posts, he was a vice president of the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca. And the Academic Health Science Networks were formed in 2013. There are 15 that cover England and they're there to speed up the adoption and pace of innovation across the NHS. And that's to improve clinical outcomes, deliver better patient experiences, drive down the cost of care and through innovation create wealth for the UK economy. How are you actually going about that? We recognise that it can be really hard to get digital innovations into the NHS. It's a real challenge for everyone. The only way that will happen is if there's a real need. Too often we see innovations that are solutions looking for problems, and what we really need are solutions that address real problems within the system. So we see ourselves quite often as matchmakers, identifying what those challenges are within the NHS, and working with clinicians, with assistant managers, and with innovators to match problems to solutions. In 2015, the NHS launched the Innovation Accelerator, which aims to nurture innovation and the people who develop it. Tom Witcher is an NHS Innovation Accelerator golden boy. His application, Doctor Doctor, was selected for use in the NHS and is bringing cost savings to hospitals and surgeries throughout the UK. So the first thing you'd see is a text message from your hospital. Um, you can text change to that if you want to change your appointment or cancel it. You can click this link, you can go online, you can see some information about who you're going to see and why you're going to see them. Again, you can change, cancel or say, I don't recognise this. Get a map and directions of where you're going to go on the day some information from your, from your clinicians, so there might be a video here or some other information about your care. You can see a list of all your upcoming appointments and for example here I've got a trauma orthopaedics appointment coming up. I can click through to that and then we can collect some information about your appointment before you come in or maybe after you've had your first appointment to inform the next steps in your care. So for example we start seeing people based on need rather than time. And has this app got all the information that a patient would require? Yeah, so we've built it with patients in mind and we've talked to people about what matters to them on the day. So for example, getting maps of where I'm going to park, I'm going to go afterwards, really matters to people. And you can see things like a list of all your past history with your clinic letters as well. And what does this mean to you, Mike? I think this is a fantastic innovation. It's all about patient-centred care, making sure that we put the patient right at the heart of what we're trying to do. 
and it drives down the cost of care as well. And I think with the future progressions that Tom's outlined, this is a great opportunity, a real platform that we can build upon. What I want to know is whether or not the innovation is embraced by medical teams in the NHS. Most clinicians are absolutely up for it. Clinicians, the commissioners, really like the idea of innovation, but it's hard. It's really tough at the moment. So it makes it very difficult to introduce new innovations. No matter how good they are, it can be a real challenge uh, at the coalface. How important are partnerships when it comes to rolling out the innovations? Partnerships between the acute trusts, mental health trusts, all of those are really important aspects and it can't be overstated. Without partnerships, nothing is going to work within the NHS. They're absolutely critical. So critical, in fact, I would say, if you just have an innovative product and put it into the system, it is more likely to fail than succeed. And there's an awful lot of work you need to do around the innovation to make sure that it really does deliver its full potential. It's likely in many cases that you'll have to change clinical pathways, you'll have to support those changes uh, through the system, and the widget on its own is really not going to work. The NHS has got its work cut out, bringing down costs and rolling out innovation across its business. But away from the NHS, healthcare disruptors are relieving some of the pressure. One of them is CIRA, who provide care for elderly people in their own homes. Their Director of Operations is Ansgar Lang, who's showing me the app they've developed for care workers. For example, we collect information around mood so that care workers are able to track that information. But also, It's the brainchild of Sira's co-founder, Dr Ben Maruthapu, who plans to shake up the care industry globally. We bring a completely new outlook in terms of how elderly care can be delivered. We use digital, digital to streamline the matching of patients and carers based on a number of characteristics, where they are, the type of care they need, what time they need it, the skill mix of care workers, language, whether they have pets or not. We use digital to automate our logistics, so carers can see more people in a given day, they can spend more time delivering services instead of just traveling. Uh, to digitally record all the information from a visit. So a carer, when they see someone in their homes, they can log on their smartphone using our platform what's been happening, the symptoms the patient experienced, whether they're improving or getting worse. And critically, we analyze this data using artificial intelligence to predict if patients going to deteriorate, which means that we can act much earlier on and intervene should they have early signs of, let's say, a urine infection, um, so that they get the right treatments on day one or two of that deterioration as opposed to day five or six, which may mean that they're too ill and they need to go to hospital. Now, in terms of the cost of setting this up, innovation costs, it must have been enormous, not just the financial side, but the time, the retraining and so on. What exactly did the investment take to cost when it comes to innovation? Innovation can be expensive, yes. I mean, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, people have to, and pharma companies have to invest billions in building drugs before they can finally release them and patients can benefit them. Technology's never been cheaper. All of our care workers have smartphones already. We don't need to buy them. Uh, so the expensive part has already kind of been done. We just need to build a digital platform or the app that sits on their smartphone and allows them to do their job better. Um, so innovation can be expensive, but at the same time, I say it's cheaper than it has ever been before. We've invested a lot in terms of improving the quality of service we provide, and that's been reflected by some of these accolades and ratings we've received. And how do you maintain that quality? Because as you grow bigger and bigger, it's keeping that consistency and making sure that the people that work for you, the carers, however they're employed by you, have the same consistent values. You're completely correct in saying that as we get bigger, how do we maintain it? This is the big challenge, the big question. The way we think we do it is firstly through robust recruitment. So we select the top 5 to 10% of people who apply to work with us. We can ensure that the carers themselves are of a high quality. Then it's about empowering them using the technology um, so that they can have access to support through our platform. They have access to doctors, to registered nurses, to our care managers at headquarters. So if they've got any problems, they can message us using the platform or call us and we'll respond immediately. Not after the visit, but while they're in the home itself. 
And then it's about monitoring of care workers. And this is partly online. So our system uh, can predict the risk of deteriorations of patients, the risk of a fall, the risk of a hospitalization. This means that as we get bigger, we can see which patients are high risk and which ones are low, and therefore who needs more care and who doesn't. Uh, and this again allows us to be much more proactive, but also monitoring smaller things such as, are all the care workers arriving on time? Are they filling out the visit reports as they should be? Uh, these are the different types of mechanisms that we have in place to ensure that monitoring is robust. And then we also have monitoring in a face-to-face -face capacity. So our care managers and registered nurses will actually do randomized spot checks and supervisions of carers as they're delivering services in the home. So we can see firsthand whether their services are being given as they should be. And regarding the apps, the technology, where can they be used? Is it smartphone based or can you access it via the web as well? At the moment, it's via the web and smartphone. So any platform that allows you to get online, you can access the Sarah website and you can see how your loved one is doing if you'd like to, or if you're a care worker, you can also check in on a patient and you can hand over certain pieces of information to other carers. On top of that, we are blending our smartphone and online platform with wearable technology. So we are allowing older people to have different wearables uh, which monitor things like heart rate, uh, pulse oximetry, movement, whether they've had a fall, calorie, uh, calories that they may have burned. And this provides continuous data. So again, we can be even more proactive than we would be otherwise because we have such a rich source of information to determine how we're going to deliver the services. And are you convinced that the wearable technology is providing you with the right information, the correct information? Is it accurate? So we always make sure that we have a, a clear idea as to which type of wearables we want to be deploying. So we, we've we piloted several different types and narrowed that down to certain brands and types of wearables to make sure that they are collecting the right type of data. And they themselves have been through respective regulatory processes to ensure that they're up to scratch and doing what they're meant to be doing. So yes. As the population ages, social care globally is going to become more and more important. But what about the ageing infrastructure that health services rely on? How is that going to be updated to improve patient care? I'm going to find out after the break. At Schneider Electric, the heart of our IoT system architecture is the EcoStructure platform connecting everything in your enterprise from the shop floor to the top floor, collecting critical data from sensors to the cloud, analyzing data to discover meaningful insights, enabling you to take action by closing the loop through real-time information and business logic. The EcoStructure platform is the key to tapping into the true potential of the Internet of Things. The healthcare sector looks after us and puts us right when things go wrong. In the 21st century, digital innovation is helping to make that care more efficient. At Moorfields Hospital in London, a new technology infrastructure has been installed, turning a 200-year-old hospital into a state-of-the-art healthcare facility. When you look today at the total cost of healthcare, it's roughly 11% of GDP in Europe. 19% in the US, and with population aging, and we see actually uh, the, the population above 60 doubling by 2050. So you have a perfect storm to achieve more with less. And actually, we see digital and digital technology as a powerful engine to drive the cost of healthcare down while actually making the most of what's available so that the healthcare would be given to anybody that would need it in the right format. There is no good patient outcome if the whole healthcare infrastructure doesn't work. First of all, it needs to be powered, it needs energy, and that energy needs to come very efficient. 20% of energy efficiency in a 300 people uh, bedroom hospital means uh, one point of EBIT gain, or it's the equivalent of, let's say, 10 additional jobs of nurse that would provide a better service. And actually, that energy efficiency is very accessible. Uh, it means that an operating theatre would not run 24 hours 7 when, and you will not have to, uh, to run all the HVAC when there is no one in the operating theatre. Or the other one would be a guest room would not be uh, ventilated and so on when there is no guest. 
in the room. Simple thing like this would end up with easy 20% saving on the whole energy bill, which in return are saving that you can either reinvest into more nurse uh, hiring or actually more saving for the hospital owner or more investment in some of the sectors. Updated facilities can contribute to better clinical outcomes, but clinicians can also provide a more efficient service if older health records are migrated to modern platforms. But that's not as easy as it sounds. Clive Flashman is president of the Telemedicine and eHealth Council of the Royal Society of Medicine in London. I wanted to find out from him what challenges innovation presents to health companies. So in terms of making sure that that valuable data is not sat in old systems, what do you need to do? The first thing is that you can migrate that data to another or better system that can use that data better. Okay? The second thing that you could do is that you could move the data into some sort of data lake or data warehouse where you bring it together with lots of other data and actually by bringing data together, you can derive greater meaning and insight from it. The third thing is that there are systems out there now that don't need you to move the data. They crawl around your whole network and even beyond the organizational boundary to do what's called a federated search. And they can bring back only the data or the answers that's needed from that data wherever that data happens to be. So it doesn't matter if the data is in your old legacy systems because these new search technologies that crawl the network will find it wherever it is. And when it comes to digital innovation, does interoperability, so that joined up thinking between devices and systems, make the biggest difference if you want to be digitally innovative? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a huge issue and it's plagued the health um, sector for years and years. From a purely technological aspect, one of the big reasons that they don't work sometimes is that people don't give proper respect to the issue of interoperability. And actually, the whole joining together of um, primary care systems, secondary, tertiary care systems, uh, infrastructure, now new digital mobile devices and tools, all of that has added a whole layer of complexity on what was an existing problem. Having a joined up view of the patient, a single view of the truth, is imperative in making safe and effective clinical decisions. Getting systems to talk to each other is something that Mike Hanne hopes innovation can help with. There are sophisticated systems within the NHS that allow us to integrate and capture data, but we've still got a problem of large legacy systems, quite often in specialist areas, and we do need to invest to make sure that those systems have a, have a system that's fit for the 21st century. So how important are things that operate in the background, the likes of admin services, doctor, doctor, or maybe infrastructure maintenance, or on the clinical side? They're all hugely important and I think it's very difficult to isolate it to one area. I think we're going to see innovations across the piece from frontline clinical services all the way to the background systems and making sure that we have the transfer of information efficiently and effectively so that clinicians can actually optimise the treatment for patients at the point of care rather than having to wait for records, making sure that all the information is available to them instantaneously. Ben Marathapu has no legacy systems to worry about. He's more focused on regulation getting up to speed with innovation. It's tricky for regulators to keep up with innovation because they have so much on their plate. There are tens of thousands of care companies and providers, let alone all the hospitals and GB practices, who they need to be regulating. And then on top of that, if you need to be looking at the frontier for what may come up in the next few years, it's very challenging given the economic pressures on the health and care system and the respective regulators and the budgets available, it's difficult. However, I think it's important that regulators don't play catch up but instead keep up with what's going on and are on the front foot because the digital and data revolution is now and it is going to transform the sector extremely quickly. The digital disruptors are just as regulated as the big players and the healthcare sector is one of the most regulated in the world and rightly so. But it's clear 
that innovation will have a big impact on clinical outcomes in the future. And I'll find out what that future has in store after the break. My name is Ellen Silcott. I am the network supervisor for the Bainbridge Island School District. We get wind storms, you know, 40, 50 plus miles an hour. Mobile Insights allows me to check the status of all my data closets from my phone at any time in any location. The Schneider Electric products give me that peace of mind to know that if there is an incident, kids can continue to learn and the classrooms can continue to operate until the school day is through. The Internet of Things is a challenging concept for larger companies if they have old legacy infrastructure. But the innovators are on hand to help. Healthcare is a knowledge-based industry. Nurses, doctors spend years trying to accumulate and learn different facts and guidelines, and then they spend the rest of their careers doing that as well. But artificial intelligence can assess, analyze, understand thousands, millions, even billions of data points a second, which means all of these facts and figures can be available to nurses and doctors whenever they need it by virtue of having an AI platform. And we're starting to see this. We have people building AI doctors, AI nurses. We're trying to provide and build a service that uses AI to provide digital and decision support to carers. Um, this is only going to be enhanced as we look forward. So if you could apply such a powerful artificial intelligence engine to medicine and to medical knowledge, the opportunity is limitless. So how about other technologies aside from AI? There are a number of innovations and technologies that will transform the face of healthcare. One is genomics and personalised medicine. So the cost of sequencing a person's genome has come down thousands of fold over the past 15 years. And what it means is what used to be, let's say, one condition such as breast cancer that had maybe 50 or 100 subtypes, instead will have 50,000 or 100,000 subtypes based on the specific genetic makeup of that individual and the cancer they have, which means we'll be able to build and provide a much more tailored treatment to their condition, which can in turn result in better outcomes for that person. And overall, this movement will allow us to go from one size fits all to one size fits one. So that's genomics and personalized medicine. The second movement, which I think we've touched on, is data and digital. And we've seen the tremendous opportunity that it provides in other sectors, and now we're seeing it in healthcare. And I think the last one is around wearables and hardware. So new devices, uh, ECGs that attach to someone's smartphone, or even ophthalmoscopes that do. All of this allows for healthcare to be much more interconnected, much more portable, and therefore to be global in how it's delivered. It doesn't matter where you live, which country you'll be able to access healthcare through your smartphone or devices that are attached to it and in turn wearables. I think where healthcare also becomes really interesting when it comes to hardware is 3D printing. And I thought 3D printing was just a fad, but it looks like it's here to stay. It's, it is transformative because what it means is wherever you are, if you've got a 3D printer, you can build that device then and there or that object. And what's even more exciting is when 3D printing is mixed and blended with regenerative medicine. So instead of printing plastic or metal, you start printing cells, tissues, and organs. And that means healthcare will be completely turned on its head. As opposed to thinking about, mm, what type of drug or medication do I need? We're just going to replace the tissue altogether, or even the organ, by printing it. That is going to be critical. And this isn't something that's imaginary or super far off. Even today, people are printing bladders. They're trying to print kidneys, tracheas. And this means you can replace organs as opposed to just trying to put a bandage over them. Uh, and that will completely change how we think about and how we deliver healthcare. The picture that Ben Maruthapu paints is exciting and transformative. For the NHS, the innovation that they are rolling out is focused on streamlining existing systems in order to meet budgetary constraints. I think innovation's got to be at the very heart of what we do within the NHS. We've become remarkably more efficient over the last few years, but that's really not going to be enough 
the only way that we're going to be able to sustain the NHS in the future is through innovation and finding new ways of doing the things that we've done in the past. So we see lots of apps and devices now being developed to help individuals um, support their health and wellness. And I can see us using sensor technology to keep patients at home. So I see a lot less in hospitals, a lot less hopefully in GP surgery, and a lot more emphasis on us as individuals taking responsibility for our healthcare, aided by technology, aided by the digital revolution that we're seeing that avoids the cascade that leads us into a, a, an acute admission. Big organisations such as the NHS will be relying on innovation and the Internet of Things to help improve efficiency. But the disruptors also need the NHS to help push forward that innovation. But if what we've heard is correct, it will also increase the income for healthcare professionals. But the aim is to improve the outcome and care of patients. That will be the true measure of its success. IOT, powering the digital economy. Brought to you by Schneider Electric.